Yeah, let's be real for a second. Having to make critical care decisions for a loved one stuck in the ICU, it's like one of the toughest things you'll ever face, right? It is, definitely. It feels like you're just stumbling around in the dark, oh. and every single decision just weighs a ton. Yeah. And, you know, especially when we're talking about an older parent or family member, it just feels even more intense. Right. So in this deep dive, we're going to really break down this guide that was made for families going through exactly this. And get this, it was actually created by the healthcare pros who work in the ICU. That's right. Our goal here is to help you approach these decisions, I don't know, maybe with a little bit more clarity and a whole lot more confidence. You know, one of the best things that this guy does is like right from the start, it says, hey, you the family member, you're not just some visitor. Oh, tell me more. You're actually a part of the care team. I love that. Yeah. I've definitely felt that helpless bystander thing in hospitals. So knowing I actually have some say, that's huge. But, you know, it also makes it even more important to understand what's actually going on. Absolutely. And the guide really pushes you to be proactive, you know. Proactive. Don't just sit around waiting for info to come your way. Uh -huh. Introduce yourself to the team. Ask questions. Wait, introduce myself to everyone? Yeah. Like doctors, nurses, the people who bring the food. Well, maybe not the food people, but the main team, for sure. Okay. Remember, you know your loved one better than anyone their personality, the things that make them tick, their routines. That's true. Sharing that stuff, it can actually help the team give more personalized care. Okay, yeah. It's easy to feel small in that environment and forget that you actually have something important to contribute. Right. But when we talk about these like life or death decisions, what are we really talking about here? So the guide lays out these two main paths of care, life support and comfort care. Okay. And they're careful to define them based on the goals, not just the medical procedures. Okay, that makes sense. So life support, it's all about doing everything you can to make life longer, hoping for recovery, however small that chance might be. And comfort care then. Mm. Am I right in thinking that's more about making sure the person is comfortable, not in pain? Right. Even if it means you know, letting nature take its course. Exactly. It's about shifting priorities, going from stretching out life no matter what to making sure there's dignity and peace in those final stages. You know, I think a lot of people really struggle with that. Yeah. Choosing comfort care can feel like you're giving up or somehow failing your loved one. And the guide hits that misconception right on the head. It straight up says that picking comfort care isn't giving up. It's mm -hmm. recognizing that sometimes the kindest and most loving choice is to put comfort first over maybe painfully extending life when it might not even help. Wow, I'm glad they put that in there because I think that's a big mental block for a lot of people, including me. And this is just the start. Yeah. The guide then takes you through these five steps to help you figure these choices out. It's like a roadmap. A roadmap through the emotional minefield of the ICU. Right. Sign me up. Okay, hit me with step one. Step one is all about getting a handle on your loved one's health before they landed in the ICU. Before. Yeah. Might seem weird, but it's super important. I think I see where they're going with this. If someone was already kind of weak and struggling, their chances of bouncing back from a serious illness are going to be different than, say, someone who was running marathons last week. Exactly. Oh, you right. got to know the starting point. The guide even asks you to rate their quality of life you know, in the weeks before the ICU. Really? It's not about judging, just getting a clear picture of their health. It makes you look at things realistically, huh? Yeah. So we've got their baseline health, then what? Step two, understanding what's going on with them right now in the ICU. Okay. And here's where it gets tough, because the guide doesn't try to sugarcoat how serious critical illness can be. Mm. It lists some of the big problems a patient might be dealing with, you know, like trouble breathing, heart problems even organ failure. Ooh, that's heavy stuff. Right. I can just imagine reading that list would make me feel sick. It's meant to inform, not scare you. Right. The more you get how serious things are, the better you can make decisions that are truly best for the patient. And I'm guessing this is also where that open communication with the medical team comes in. Oh, for sure. Like, if something on that list throws me off, I can just ask them to explain it. Absolutely. Okay. Don't let all the medical jargon get in the way. Ask until you feel good about understanding what's happening. I'm already feeling a bit more in control. You know, like I'm actually part of this. That's good. So we've got the before and the now. What's next? Step three takes us to the core of it all. Figuring out what matters most to the patient themselves. Oh, wow. It's about switching from what we e think is best to what they would want. That's so important. Right. But also 
so hard. Mm. How do we know what someone would want in this kind of situation? Yeah. Especially if they can't even tell us. Well, the guide starts off by asking if your loved one has an advanced directive. Okay. That's a legal document where they've spelled out what they want for medical care if they can't speak for themselves. I have to admit, I don't even know if my own parents have one of those. Hmm. I should probably ask. Yeah, that's a good conversation to have. But even if they don't have a formal document, the guide gives you a way to think about their values. No, I'm all ears. It lays out common reasons why people might choose life support. Okay. Like wanting to live as long as they can, hoping for more time with family, or maybe they have a strong religious belief in preserving life. Right. And then it lists reasons why someone might choose comfort care. Like what? Avoiding suffering that goes on and on, mm -hmm. keeping medical interventions to a minimum, or just letting nature run its course. Okay, but how do we know what our loved one would really choose? Yeah. It's not like we carry around a questionnaire with their answers to these heavy questions. That's where the guide gets smart. It asks you to rate how important each of those things would be to owe your loved one. Wait, like on a scale? Mm -hmm. A scale of 1 to 10? Yeah. So if my dad was always super independent and hated the idea of being hooked up to machines, I'd give avoiding medical interventions a high rating. Exactly. It makes you think about their values, not just your own hopes or fears. I could see how that would be so helpful especially if family members are disagreeing about what to do. It takes out some of the emotion and focuses on what the patient would probably want most. It's all about honoring their wishes as best you can. Even in a crazy situation like this, this is making me think I need to have some serious talks with my folks about this stuff before a crisis hits. Well, the guide actually encourages that. Oh, it does it? But mean? asks you if you've ever talked about these things with your loved one. Hmm. So we've covered their health before the ICU, their situation right now, and we've dug into their values. Right. Where does the roadmap take us next? Good question. Step four, tackle something people often forget, but it's really important. Okay. Who else should be in on this decision? You mean like other family, close friends? Exactly. It acknowledges that you might not be the only one making this choice. Makes sense. And it encourages you to figure out who else should be part of the process. Big decisions are usually easier when you have support, and this is about as big as they get. And it goes even further, asking you to think about what your role should be in making the decision. Oh, good point. Because families can be dot complicated. Yeah. Maybe there are siblings who aren't getting along or one person who's clearly the main decision maker. Right. The guide gives you space to think about if you want to be the only one deciding, make choices together with others, or just follow what the medical team suggests. That's really thoughtful, because there's no single right way to handle this. Every family is different. Exactly. And getting those little details can make things way smoother, especially when everyone's already stressed. Okay, so we've gotten the information, thought about values, and put together our support team. What's the final step on this ICU decision-making roadmap? Step five is all about getting ready to make the decision. And the guide gets super practical here. Oh, it's like a checklist to make sure you've got everything covered. I love checklists. Lay it on me. First up, do you get your loved one's health situation? And I mean, really get it? Right. Not just nodding along while the doctor talks in that medical language. <laughs> like if I can't explain it to someone else in plain English, then I probably don't get it well enough. Right. Okay. Then it asks if you know enough about how likely they are to recover with each path, whether it's life support or comfort care. So no sugarcoating or clinging to false hope. Right. It's about being realistic. Got it. What else? It asks you to think about the good and bad of each choice. Okay. Because even if you're leaning one way, you got to weigh both sides carefully. This step feels like a gut check. Yeah. Like, okay, before we make this huge decision, let's pause and make sure we've really looked at everything. Exactly. And it's not just about medical facts. It also asks about your support system. Okay. Do you feel supported? Do you have people you can talk to? Do you feel okay about making this choice? Because no matter how prepared we try to be mentally, this stuff is hard. Right. It's okay to admit you need a shoulder to cry on or someone to talk things through with. Exactly. And, you know, even with all this prep, there's still this big thing hanging over everything. What's that? Uncertainty. Oh, yeah. The what if monster. The guide actually talks about this directly, asking, do you feel sure about the best choice for your family member? Mm. And it says it's okay not to feel sure. In fact, in these situations, a little uncertainty is totally normal. She's like, 
we're humans, not robots. Right. We're not programmed to know the right answer in every crazy situation. Exactly. And that's why the guide ends this part with some great advice on how to get more info and support. It tells you to ask the medical team questions, have family meetings to talk things out, talk to people you trust, or even get help from people like social workers or ethicists. Wow, that's a lot of support. Yeah. I'm starting to see why this guide has been so helpful for families going through this. It really is like having a map when it feels like you're lost in the dark. And while we've gone through the five steps, mm. I feel like there's still so much more to talk about. Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. We come back, we'll dive in some specific questions and things that really made us stop and think. And we'll share some thoughts on how to use this framework in real life situations. Sounds good. We left off talking about some pretty heavy stuff, like facing those really tough decisions in the ICU. It's intense. It is. And even with all the info and planning we talked about, you know, there's this whole emotional side that's just as important. Yeah, it's like no matter how much we try to be logical and weigh things out, this stuff just hits you in the gut. Absolutely. It's like trying to think clearly while you're on a roller coaster. There's that logical part of you, but then there's all this fear, the guilt, those what ifs that mm -hmm. just keep swirling around. And it's different for everybody, you know? Yeah. Some folks shut down, others try to be super logical, and some just fall apart. It's true. And all of those reactions are totally okay. The guide doesn't go super deep into coping strategies, but it does say how important it is to have support. That's key. You're not supposed to go through this alone. Right. Talk to family and friends. Find a therapist or counselor if you need professional help. Maybe even join a support group with people who get what you're dealing with. It's like they tell you on planes, you know. Put on your own oxygen mask before helping others. Exactly. If you're running on empty emotionally, you won't be able to fight for your loved one. And speaking of fighting for them, I think it's worth repeating that talking to the healthcare team is so important through all of this. Yeah, we've talked about asking questions to make sure you understand everything. But it's more than that, isn't it? It is. Don't be scared to say what's worrying you. Share what you're seeing with your loved one. Make sure their voice is heard. Even if they can't speak for themselves. Right. You're their advocate. You know, You're their protector, their yeah. voice in a system that can feel cold and confusing. Exactly. And remember, the healthcare team is there to help. Right. They're not the enemy. They want what's best for your loved one, too. It's about teamwork, sharing info, making choices together. It's a partnership, not a fight. Exactly. So as we wrap up this deep dive into making those tough choices in the ICU, we want to leave you with something to think about, something to carry with you after the episode. Okay. If you could share one bit of advice with another family going through the same thing, what would it be? That's a great way to put it. Right. It's about taking everything we've learned, the knowledge, the feelings, and boiling it down to one piece of wisdom. Yeah. It's a reminder that even when things feel chaotic and uncertain, there's always something to learn, something to share. Right. Something that can help light the way for others who might be going through the same thing. I like that. We hope this deep dive has given you some tools and insights to face your own journey through the ICU with a bit more confidence and a little less fear. Thank you.